welcome to the ASRock IPMI overview video. Now, how would you like to be able to remote into your computer even when it's off? That's what IPMI is all about. IPMI has been available on server class machines for forever. Um, you don't really see it in the home market too much, so I'm going to try to explain it to you guys. Um, this is, I guess, technically, um, these boards from ASRock that we're looking at are server class boards, even though they're ITX. Um, and they, they really don't skimp on the features as far as the IP management stuff goes. Actually, this is one of the best IPMI interfaces that I've ever seen. Now, right now, this particular one we're looking at, it's the uh, Aviton 8-core board. It's the C2754DI. Um, I think the IPMI interface is similar on similar generation ASRock boards, but uh, IPMI lets you remote into the machine um, through a web browser once you've got it configured. And that's what that extra network interface is on the back of the machine. Now you don't have to use a separate network interface. It can be shared um, so that you could share this functionality with one of the onboard Intel NICs, but it does have a completely separate Realtek NIC that's just for remote control if you wanted to have that on a separate network. So this is really built to be a, a small business, medium business platform. This would even be okay in the data center um with the ipmi so let's log in and take a look this is the, the web page when you first load it i've just got it set up here um we want to sort of enable pop-ups so that it can do pop-ups it also depends on java so you gotta make sure your version of java is up to date and you'll see why in a minute i'm not kidding when i say that you can remote into your computer even when it's off so this is the ipmi screen it shows you uh what the current status of the machine is um, there's an LED button on the back, and you can turn it on and off with this button. Hopefully I'll remember to cut to the B-roll of this going on and off. Alright, so that's the LED on, off, on, off. So if you've got a bunch of these, it makes it easy to locate. Alright, so one of the reasons that I say this is the coolest IPMI I've seen, we'll just jump right to it, is audio and video recording. So, triggers configuration. So if there's a voltage or temperature event, if there's a watchdog timer event. Now if you don't know a watchdog timer, there's a special piece of hardware in the server. And it's like a dead man switch almost. The server software, the operating system, Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, whatever, has to reach out and touch that watchdog every so often. And if it doesn't, then the servers reset. And so theoretically it would boot up normally and everything would be good. So if there's a watchdog event, it starts taking video and saves it so you can look at it later to see what happened. Uh, chassis event, there's a chassis intrusion switch on the motherboard. So if you uh, if you have a chassis that has the intrusion switch, uh, you can wire that up. So if somebody opens the board, you can get video of what's going on on the server console when that happens. So this is really, really cool. Um, and we can go here to recorded video and see the recorded video of when and, and how that was recorded and it saves it to the flash memory on the server. So that's a really nice security feature. Um, we've got, before we get into remote control, um, we've got some interesting, you know, the information about the FRU, server health. There's a sensor readings, but also a log, a history of the different um, uh, server uh, events that have happened as far as the sensors go for fans, temperature, and voltage from the power supply. This is really, really cool. Um, there's uh, one thing I want to show you in here, network bonding default interfaces. You can configure it to bond to the built-in uh, uh, Intel networks, or you can have it run on that separate Realtek NIC, like I was saying before. This is where the configuration for that is. So if you want to have, like if this is too much power and your LAN is a wild, wild place, you don't want necessarily someone to have full remote control over your machines, even though you can put a password on this, this lets you run it on a separate management network. And honestly, in business, that's the best idea. You really ought to do that if you're gonna do this in a business environment because these remote access programs sometimes have security issues and because of how, you know, because of how they are, they're difficult to update sometimes. Although this one's, this particular one is pretty easy to update and I'll show you that. But uh, for security reasons, it always makes sense to run that on a separate network. And sometimes you see that called out of band management. And so this lets you take this management web page that we're on out of band and control it. So that's where that is. Um, you can also configure Active Directory integration for this um, and a whole bunch of other things. 
um, which is really nice. You can do your own, like a real SSL certificate instead of the self-signed SSL certificate this is running with now. So these are all really, really cool enterprise features. The other thing I wanna show you is virtual media. So if you had one of these in the data center, you could actually remotely reinstall an operating system. So you can use the virtual media thing to expose a, you know, an ISO or whatever over the network, like as if it was local, in order to reinstall an operating system remotely or something like that. Usually, if you have that kind of a problem, you've got hardware issues, you get to do a drive replacement or something like that. I don't know how useful that will be in a home environment, but it's really, really cool that that feature is there in something at this price point. I'll show you the firmware update thing real quick. Um, the firmware update thing is pretty easy. It's a wizard. You just browse, next, upload. Um, I was sort of surprised and delighted that the, the board that I got was fully up to date. Usually one of the first things that you should do when you get a board like this is check and make sure that your firmware is fully up to date. And this is the baseband management controller, the BMC uh, or IPMI interface. And there's a download for that on ASRock website. So you can you can update this and keep an eye on it. It's not it's it's not like a BIOS upgrade. It's a little like a BIOS upgrade, but it's not the BIOS. There's actually a computer within a computer, and that's the uh, update for the computer within a computer that lets you remote control the full machine. So we're it's almost like we're remoted into a little computer inside the main computer that lets us control it. Uh, and I mentioned being able to turn the compute turn the server on remotely. So if the computer is plugged into power, you've got that standby power, you know how when you've got your computer and you plug in your ethernet cable and the lights are on even when the computer's off, well it's, it's powered by standby power from your power supply. This is no different. The computer within a computer, the IPMI interface, is powered by the standby power. So you can go to this page remotely even when the server's off and power it on or reset it or whatever you need to do. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at console redirection. Okay, now we've got the remote view of what's going on on the machine like as if we're sitting there. And right now, at this particular juncture, we are actually inside the BIOS. So, um, you know, how cool is it that you can remote into the computer and run the BIOS? And just to show you, we've got full control over the machine. We're gonna do uh, reset server. Sure, it's like, oh, this is a power control operation. Are you sure? Yes. Execute. Oh, no more signal from the screen. It's gone. When you reboot, it also reboots the little management thingy. But that's okay, because it will come back. And we're back in. And as we can see from the little view here, this is a current view of what's on the console, which makes sense because I'd installed FreeNAS on this thing earlier. It is Nasferatu, after all. This is IPMI, and this is why it's cool. It's computerception I don't know but this is a really really neat piece of functionality and this is one of the best IPMI interfaces that I've seen um, it is it is very much on the level with what you'd expect from you know a, a $5,000 server IPMI interface in fact it's probably the same because it's you know American megatrends well, that's been the ASRock IPMI overview. Um, hopefully you guys learned a lot more about an IP management interface and IP control uh, or remote control for a server. If you're not gonna use this, be sure to set a password on it and or disable it on the LAN interface because somebody can remote into your computer and get to the console. So like in, uh, in FreeNAS, because I've got it configured to not um, block the console or not you know, have a password on the console, somebody could remote into this with the default password and then take control like as if they were sitting at the machine remotely. So it's very important to secure this, turn it off if you're not gonna use it, you know, whatever. But it's so handy that you can, you know, do a lot of cool stuff with it remotely. I mean, you could put this in a completely hard to get to place in your house and unless you had a uh, hardware failure, um, you wouldn't even ever have to go plug a monitor into it or deal with it. You could just run it and it would be fine. It's really good for small apartments and things like that. I mean, the Node 304 that we're using here is a really, really compact case for as much stuff as you can get in there. There are other ITX cases that are really compact, but you can have terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of storage in such a compact and relatively quiet box. And this means you don't have to have a monitor keyboard and mouse with it at all. You could completely reinstall the operating system. You could do an upgrade. You could check on it, you know, whatever you need to do. I would feel completely comfortable doing a complete OS re-image 
of uh, FreeNAS on this thing remotely with no local keyboard and mouse with this IPMI interface. So that's been an overview of IPMI. Rate, subscribe. Mm -hmm.